Hey friends, welcome to Embed Idea. I am Tirthankar and you are watching 8051 tutorial series. So in this lesson, I am going to discuss how interrupts can be programmed in uh, 8051. So this is lesson 8. So in this lesson, I will cover interrupt concepts, then how interrupt works, then importance of interrupts, then I will tell you that how interrupts are incorporated in 8051. Then I'll tell you the interrupt registers and their description. Then as we are programming in C, so I'll show you how to write interrupt programs in C. There are some specific codes. Then at last, I'll show you one example by toggling a LED through interrupt, hardware interrupt. If you have not subscribed to Embed Idea, then please subscribe it because I'll come up with more such microcontroller lessons. And uh, that's it. So let's begin. So what is interrupt? Literally, interrupt means obstructing a normal process. So in case of uh, microcontrollers, interrupt occurs to tell the processor that something needs its attention. And then microcontroller pauses the normal execution and it goes to the interrupt service routine where there are some uh, in instructions are written. After attending the interrupt, microcontroller comes back to resume the normal execution process. This is how interrupt works in 8051 or any kind of microcontroller. So how actually interrupt works, you can understand in it in a better way, let me give you one example, the calling example. Suppose you are watching this video and some of your friend, Mr. X is calling you. So it will obstruct the normal execution process. So what will you do? You will pause the video and attend the call. When you will see that Mr. X is calling, then you will have some set of uh, dialogue, some set of processes some set of uh, conversations whatever he is asking you to do will do that and after some uh, chit chat you will come back here and you will finish watching the video this is how the process works so here the normal execution process is the watching video process the phone call is an interrupt and whatever you mentioned or you have uh, listened or you talk to that person is the instructions written on the service routine. So if interrupt occurs during normal execution, the controller, the same way, same way your brain functions, the controller goes to the interrupt service routine. And after executing the instructions written in the service routine, the controller comes back just like you. So this is how interrupt works. Now I think you have understood it in a better way. So, you may ask me that why interrupt is important. Let me tell you, interrupt is the quintessential part of a microcontroller. So, to understand the importance, let me give you an example. Suppose you are meeting your friend at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and you reached the venue or meeting point at 2.50 p.m. Suddenly, he called up and told that, he will be late by an hour. So now, practically you have two options. In option one, simply wait for him for an extra hour. In option two, do your work and come back to the point at 4 p.m. Suppose you have some bank work. You can go to bank, finish your work and then come back at the meeting venue at 4 p.m. I have asked this question every time I go to the training program and uh, the lectures, everybody, everybody preferred this second option. Actually, nobody want to waste any time. That's why the second option is preferred. And I think you will also choose the second option over the first one. So the first option here is the delay process. Now, try to remember in the LED blinking example, I have written this kind of uh, program that led on then i have used one fake loop 
where uh, i is 0 initialized as 0 and then i goes to 30000 after that led off then again that fake loop so in this loop microcontroller is doing nothing except that it is counting 0 to 30000 so it's a simple waste of time so there is some alternate option using interrupt how it works let's see so in interrupt when interrupt is enabled the process will be led on then the processor will start a timer and it will start executing some other work or other tasks after a second the timer will tick and it will notify the processor that that a second is over then the processor will come back to the normal execution and it will switch off the led then again it will start this timer do some other work and after a second it will come back and switch on the led by using interrupt the led blinking process will look completely different so here the microcontroller is not wasting any kind of time so that is the difference between a delay enabled process and an interrupt enabled process that's that makes the interrupt a quintessential part of a microcontroller so how interrupts are uh, configured in 8051 say uh, c 8051 has five interrupt sources all the interrupts are hardware and vectored by vector i meant that every interrupt has a particular memory location associated with it and that fixed memory locations are allocated for writing subroutines or service routines so the first interrupt pair is the external interrupt 0 and external interrupt 1 and you can find those interrupts at pin number 12 and 13 see int0 int1 these are the external interrupts then we have the timer interrupts in 8051 t0 t1 uh, you remember that tf0 is 1 when timer finishes the counting tf1 becomes 1 when timer 1 finishes counting those bits can trigger interrupt so here four interrupts are gone and the last interrupt is serial interrupt that uh, triggered by the ti and ri when transmission process is finished or reception process is finished that time the serial interrupts serial uh, process sorry serial process can trigger an interrupt and these interrupts can be prioritized so let me show you that there are three interrupt registers in 8051 one is interrupt enable ie another is interrupt priority that is ip and third one is tcon so i'll show you one by one so in this slide i am showing you interrupt enable so this is the 8 bit register interrupt enable see there are only six bits are used and two bits are not required for this so this ea look at that msb bit that ea ea means enable access so when you set this particular bit that means you are enabling all the interrupts after that you can individually enable the interrupts by setting the uh, bits designated for each interrupt and if you put 0 in this ea bit then the all the interrupts will be completely disabled now here es is for serial interrupts et1 for timer 1 interrupt ex1 for external interrupt 1 that is at pin 13 et0 is for timer 0 interrupt and ex0 is for external interrupt 0 this is how interrupt enable works so now if uh, let me give you one example that if i want to enable external interrupt zero so what will be the value i should write inside this interrupt enable register this will be the value you have to put ea to one then zero 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 these bits are not required and only ex zero is required so if i convert this binary uh, bits in hex it will be 81 when ex0 interrupt is activated now when uh, if you want to activate both ex0 and ex1 the value will be 1000 that means 85 if i convert it into hex let's go to ip interrupt priority 
Now priority is needed only when multiple interrupts occurs at the same time. So this is the register where we can uh, and these are the five bits for five interrupts. If I put one that particular interrupt will be of high priority and if I put zero that particular interrupt will be of low priority. So PS is for serial, PT1, PT0 is for timers and PX1, PX0 for external interrupts. Now if two interrupts are configured as high priority interrupts and two occurred at the same time, what will happen? Let me show you this table. If one high priority interrupt and the low priority interrupt occurred at the same time, the processor will choose high priority interrupt over low. If a low priority interrupt and one high priority interrupt occurred at the same time the processor will choose high. If the processor is executing a low priority interrupt and then one high priority interrupt occurred it will left the execution and it will go to process the high priority interrupt first. And if both same priority interrupt like both high priority interrupt occurred at the same time, then the processor will choose whichever comes first. Same case with when two low priority interrupts occurred at the same time. This is how uh, the controller handles the prioritize, prioritization of interrupt. And uh, so here I'll tell you about TCON, so, but here I'll focus only on the lower nibble of TCON that is IE1, IT1, IE0 and IT0. So this IE1 and IE0 is the flag which is set or clear by the hardware when the processor receives an interrupt and goes to the service routine. So what happens uh, when suppose uh, external interrupt 0 occurred then this IE0 flag will be set by the hardware. Hardware will go to the service routine, respective service routine for external interrupt 0. It will complete the process. Then when interrupt execution is completed, this bit will be 0 automatically by the hardware. So we will not focus much on IE0 and IE1 because our focus should be on IT1 and IT0. So IT1, IT0 when set the interrupt type is configured as falling edge like this it0 when if you put one to it the interrupt type will be falling edge so what is low level this is called low level and this is called falling edge so sometimes falling edge is very necessary and works well with the application and sometimes low level works well with the application in case of low level if the interrupt pin receives ground or zero volt it will trigger the interrupt but in case of falling edge when the pin will receive a transition from 1 to 0 it will trigger the interrupt both are different and i'll show you in the application so this is the interrupt codes and this is how we write uh, I have told already told you that these interrupts in 8051 are vectored interrupt. So there are some interrupt sequence number written on the left uh, column of the table. You can see that interrupt number 0 is external interrupt 0 and the related memory location is 0, 0, 0, 3 in hex. Similarly, for interrupt number 1, that is timer 0 interrupt. It is uh, the subroutine, you should write the subroutine from location number 0B. For interrupt number 2, it is EX1, the location is 13. For 3, it is 1B. For 4, it is 23. Now see, these are the sequence. ES, ET1, EX1, ET0, EX0. So for EX0, that is interrupt number 0, the memory location is 03. So here I have given one sample that uh, look at the main function. I have written IE equal to 0 cross 84. 84 means EA IE. This is the IE register. EA is 1, then 0, 0, 0, then 0, 1, 0, 0. That means I have activated external interrupt 1. I think you can understand. Let me 
chose a pointer here now you can see that i have activated ex1 by writing this 84 so this is how we can write the subroutine in c void my isi you can give any name to it within bracket void then double underscore then i have written interrupt 2 interrupt space 2 2 is the sequence number c this is the 2 for external interrupt 1 now you can write your code so what will happen in the subroutine you have to write in that code and this is how we can write the subroutine header like void any function name within bracket void then double underscore then interrupt is the keyword then space you have to mention the sequence number now the time for experiment so what i'll do is i'll toggle a led through interrupt let me show you how i have written the code then i'll make the circuit and show you to save your time i have already created the project and i have already written some code so here for led i have used this macro definition at p1.1 that is my patent led port <laughs> then i have mentioned this interrupt service routine i'll go to that but before that i want to show you that what i have written in ie ie is 81 that means i have activated external interrupt 0 that means pin 12 that is the pin where i should give the interrupt so ie is 81 then led equal to 0 means i have configured that particular pin as output then see this while one practically this is a forever true loop so when the processor will go here it cannot come back from here without using a break statement but that is the beauty of interrupt service routine so this service routine will automatically get called when that pin number 12 receives an interrupt so in that service routine my sequence number is 0 because 0 is for external interrupt 0 what i have written is led equal to not led that means if the default value of led is 0 then not led means led will be 1 then when again the interrupt will be occurred led will be 0 again when the interrupt will be occurred led will be 1 this is how the code will go so this is my simple code and i don't have any more lines to write so what i'll do is i'll build target is up to date that means i have already built this so now what i'll do i'll open proteus so this is my sketch and let me add 89c51 my target microcontroller then i'll add led active so by default interrupt is selected at low level so what i'll do is i'll add a button to it one button and one resistor mm. all the things have added now take this microcontroller let me zoom the screen this is fine now let's connect the led at p1.1 this is the ground Com now connection is complete now i'll connect the resistor now interrupt is set at low level that means whenever that pin will receive a low signal then interrupt will be triggered that's why i have to make a pull up circuit pull up means where resistance is directly connected to the power supply so let me take a dc power supply here dc dc power supply then resistance to switch and here i'll take a ground ground is connected to the button now pin number 12 is our 
target interrupt pin so pin number 12 is connected here and here i will apply a 5 volt now when this switch will be pressed pin number 12 will receive a zero this is the beauty of pull up so interrupt will be triggered and led when initialized as zero led will be one but second time when i will press the switch led will be zero this should be our successful application so now what i'll do is i have to locate my hex file which is stored in documents then embed idea then codes now go to interrupt then bin debug interrupt hex file complete now let's play the simulation led is zero now if i press the switch led is not glowing properly now led is glowing but there were some blinking issues so what i'll do is let's solve that i'll stop the simulation here if you click here probe mode you'll get voltage current probe so i'll take a voltage probe here now let's play the simulation see voltage is 5 whenever i'm pressing the switch voltage becomes 0 See, it's very unstable. See, let me hold it for a bit. Now it's glowing. Again, I'll press this, LED should be off. Again, I'll press this, LED should be on. But whenever I'm pressing it, see what happens is whenever i am pressing this switch and holding it for a bit the pin is receiving interrupt on a regular basis because it's a low level interrupt so every time the microcontroller goes to the normal execution it receives an interrupt so it toggles the led then at first time the led will be on then again toggling led zero then one then zero that's why the blinking case happens so we have one remedy so let me stop this it will happen with uh, hardware also so let me edit some not edit one line i'll add that is it0 i'll set this bit when it0 is one the interrupt will be falling edge so let me build this already built so now the interrupt is configured as falling edge so it will only work at the transition transition means by default the pin is at 5 volt whenever i will press the switch one transition will happen the led will be toggled so let me play it now this is the transition see led is on again the transition led is off again the transition led on this works smoothly so whenever that blinking case will happen with you you can configure the interrupt as falling edge triggered interrupt not low level triggered interrupt see this is working very smoothly so this is all about interrupt i think you have understood the interrupt very clearly if you have any questions then you can write to me in comments i'll answer you the code the circuits i have uploaded in my google drive you can get the download link in description in the next lesson i'll discuss how you can interface lcd 16 cross 2 with 8051 i guess you like the video so you can like it and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to embed idea thanks for watching